Hey, this is Anthony the Brazilian. Come watch this side and ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new Bell Eliminator helmet available at Revzilla.com. This is the Bell Eliminator, and all I can say is Rubbin's Racing, but that would be the wrong decade, so we'll just say shake and bake. This is Bell's homage to your classic auto racing helmet, and I know the people at Simpson are getting a little nervous because they have really dominated that segment, that style for so long in the motorcycle industry. They came over from the car world. Now, if we look at it at first glance, this is a solid white. I have my rally graphic to the left. These are brand new for the fall of 2018. Four bones coming in around the two pound 13 ounce mark. So while I say the other ones in this category are going to be over the three pound mark, for around the $400 mark, you're getting a helmet that comes in sub threes. Two pounds, 13 ounces is extremely lightweight. I don't at this point consider $400 for a premium helmet to be nosebleed expensive compared to the competitive set. You could easily spend four, five, six, seven hundred dollars $700. Ultimately, I'm a big fan of what they've done here. Now, it's not without its challenges. They've really injected this old school style into this lid, and as I walk through it, you're gonna see a few things jump out. You can't close the vents on top. There's no chin vent. Ultimately, there's no channels in the EPS. But overall, dollar for helmet, it's a rock solid design. You know what Bell's going to do. They're going to have a consistent head shape in their intermediate oval, and ultimately they're coming to the table with this eliminator, which should make a dent in this category. Now, quick note on fitment. Now, I mentioned earlier, you have the classic Bell intermediate oval head shape, a little bit longer front to back, and that's what we typically can see from them. That's been consistent for years. This helmet runs a little snug though. Part of it's a clearance issue, and then part of it is a little bit of a fitment issue on its own. So what I'll say to you is use a tape measure. Make sure you know your circumference, the widest part of your brow in centimeters, and then look at the size chart and figure out if you're a medium, if you're towards the middle to the top end of that centimeter range for a medium, go up to a large. So what I'm telling you is if you're on the cusp or you're in the middle to the top end of the centimeter range for the particular size you're looking at, go up to the next step or the next size to make sure that it's going to fit, you'll have proper clearance and you'll get the right fit. Bell, I'm not overly mad at you for doing that. Again, you're coming to the game with a new shell shape and sometimes there are quirks, but at the end of the day, it is something if you're evaluating this helmet, you need to take into consideration to make sure you have the best chance of getting fit right your first go around. Now remember, we're gonna ship free over 39 bucks. You can always chat with us if you want help in a walkthrough on it. And as always, click our logo, subscribe to us or have Zillow on our YouTube channel, leave me your comments, request your feedback on the new Eliminator, which again, you can hear from the tone of my voice, I'm pretty excited about. Now, diving into some of the other nuances on the outside before we get to the guts. There are a few things going on here. We talked about a lack of chin vent on the inside. There's no actuation here. You just have these slits on the side. Again, from a functionality standpoint, it could be beefed up. Ultimately, too, no ability to open and close and shoot air up to the face shield. Moving up to the top, we have these really cool grommet vents. I haven't seen grommet vents in a while outside of like the bullet or some really retro inspired lids. Staying with that retro theme, we just have more of them. But if you ride in the rain, all of you in Seattle, think long and hard if this is your lid because you're gonna be washing your hair every time you get rained on. No way to stop it. If we work our way around to the back, you'll see, again, the framework for this helmet, it's fiberglass, it's composite, it's super lightweight, but it's very simple. No exhaust vents, no venturis, no passive ventilation. So the ventilation is, I'll give it a B. It's okay and you can't close it, so there's a little bit of a functional issue. Now, we work our way over to the face shield mechanism. Notice here on the side, they went retro. What does that mean? It's an Allen key and an Allen key. This is for removal, this is for tightening. Oh, I can feel the tension. You know where I feel it. This is where I would decide, instead of detents, how that tensioner works with this shield mechanism, working its way down and basically locking it into place or locking it up. Again, how easy or hard it is to use. I like the gasket. I like that I have a lock all the way down at the bottom. And the other thing that's really cool about this helmet is we've seen Arai come out with their SAI Max Vision a few years ago, which basically takes the pin lock approach and maximizes it. This is essentially Bell's pin lock. They've gone and they've developed their own now. It's called ProVision. And what it is is a double paned window system, which uses the laws of physics, basically by having a second layer of plastic that's optically correct, that traps a layer of air, and that's why you don't get fog or condensation. It's not chemical, it's not using anything that's gonna wear off, it ultimately is stuck in, non-removable, Bell is calling it ProVision. And again, it's nice to see that fully integrated, no add-ons, nothing to replace, very low maintenance moving forward, which is a nice touch considering they made you have to like fumble through carrying an Allen wrench, but if you're riding a vintage bike, 
chances are you got a toolkit somewhere, and if you're gonna pull over for a cup of joe, you can probably adjust your helmet if it starts to get loose on you. Now, if I work my way into the guts of the lid, let me flip it up, turn it on its side. Here is my trusty donut. You'll see at the bottom here, has this nice ridge around it. It creates, again, a finishing touch, almost a chin spoiler effect that gives it that retro flavor. And the guts are pretty simple from Bell. They're gonna be antimicrobial, antibacterial. They're using that silver ion technology, which is really nice. It's a double D ring with magnafusion, so nothing's flopping around and biting you, and when you can pull everything out, typically you can clean it, it's comfortable, it stays where it's supposed to be, and we're gonna see when I pull it out here, because I forgot to check before we shot this bad boy today, if we have pockets for speaker cutouts, because there's so many folks, and Bell is typically forward-thinking, so many folks these days that are putting a comm unit for rider-to-rider, -rider or music, or navigation, again, pairing with your smartphone, and Bell has done that. So again, you can get a sticky mount or a clamp mount on this guy, no problem. It's a little thick for a clamp mount, and on the inside, you are gonna see there is a speaker cutaway. So you do have the ability to put even something like a Sina 20S, which has a thicker pocket or thicker speaker, you can integrate it. Now, a few things I like before I get to the guts here. The first one is, they've given you maximum breathability at the top, there's not even a comfort line or at the top, making sure it's not hiding in there. Again, very simple in its design. The other thing I love is that there's no snaps on the front. So you have this plastic to plastic integration point, which ensures you don't get any hotspot. Down below the occipital ridge, you're gonna see your classic two pops on the back. You'll never feel these guys. If you feel them while you're riding, you might have an issue with your head. So interior, same lining, washable, antimicrobial, super premium. At 400 bucks, you need to make sure you're getting premium stuff. Now. The interior guts here, and this guy is removable. I was gonna say, there has to be something at the top. It's interesting that they did this. One, it's adjustable. Two, it's on its own. Three, it's gonna create more air room for circulation. But I will tell you that there's no grooves cut in the top of this lid. So that would be on my end, it's a nitpick, but if I have these big nine vent holes at the front that I can't turn off or essentially are giving me a ton of airflow, give me the ability to channel it down around the crown of my head or maybe down around the sides and back of my head. So what we see in other lids, maybe they didn't do it because they wanted to articulate the uh, comfort liner a different way, but ultimately that would be a nitpick. So we look at the helmet in total. Headline, does this style speak to you? Do you how badly do you want to be shake and bake, right? That's question number one. Question number two is can you afford to invest $400 in a lid that's DOT, ECE, fiberglass, will pass that safety standard for Bell with flying colors, but ultimately comes in at two pounds, 13 ounces. When we get under three, that is a very, very narrow set of helmets. That is rarefied air in the motorcycle helmet community. Again, they're not cutting quarters to do it, they're just designing a truly phenomenal helmet. And again, know what you're getting into. There are some creature comforts. If you wanna change the shield all the time, if you wanna do different things, you know, you don't have vent actuation at the front, you can't shut these vents off, and ultimately it's a little bit harder to, um, call it modify or set this shield because it's missing some Tense and you have to use an Allen key. Other than that though, that's your kind of cost benefit, that's your trade-off, but we give it a pretty high grade when it comes to finally another premium manufacturer stepping into Simpsons Chili Bowl and saying, hey, if you dig the Simpson and what they're doing, that's great, but now there's another option from Bell, which has, again, 50 plus year heritage going all the way back to the 1960s. Now, the next step in your journey is click the info button, desktop, mobile device, visit the product detail page or evzla.com, read other rider reviews, you shouldn't just take my word for it. As always, we'll ship free over 39 bucks. If you wanna to talk to our gear geek, see us at revzla.com. 877-792-9455. Thanks for watching our Detail Breakdown. Remember, subscribe to us or Brazil on our YouTube channel. Stay up to date with our opinion of the latest and greatest in the motor motorcycle universe. I'm Anthony. We'll see you next time. Shake and bake.